10 rules for gold and silver stacking. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. This is going to be a really high level uh, sort of spark notes type of video for especially new stackers. Not to say that you won't get something out of this video if you're a seasoned stacker, but in order to be a successful silver investor or stacker, it's imperative that you stay current with what's happening in the silver and gold markets and that you you know try to stay current with investment and stacking strategies and the first uh, rule that i think you should uh, follow if you're just getting into stacking and the first rule i believe is to start small keep it simple it's the kiss principle right too often stackers get really excited and, and don't you blame them i mean come on look at this <laughs> There's, it's a lot of fun to stack but what happens is they buy too much all at once and sometimes they get the wrong stuff right you know and some people will say silver silver there is no such thing as wrong silver or gold yankee but i i think there is uh less wise uh bullion choices when you're first starting out stacking Beginning precious metals investors and stackers should concentrate on the basics. And, and my basics are the three items in stacking the Yankee way. It's constitutional silver and uh, government minted bullion right here and uh, gold, especially the fractional type. You can save even more in premiums with bullion bars or or rounds. This is a round I got back when I really started stacking. It's really cool. <laughs> That's a round. It's not a government minted bullion piece. Okay. But, you know, whether it's the American Silver Eagle or a Libertad from Mexico, government minted bullion is a great way to stack. Also, just fractional gold if you want to get into gold and you don't have enough for a, a full ounce a nice quarter ounce canadian gold maple leaf is a great way to go but if you want to save even more in premiums you can get bars like this silvertown bar very cool but the point is to look to pay a minimum premium over the actual metal value and that means at the start Avoid semi-numismatic coins, slabbed or graded coins, commemorative coins, you know, really unique decorative items, jewelry, other collectibles, okay? They all carry a large premium. And sometimes they have limited resale value. So be really careful. That's the first rule. Second rule, don't panic stack. I've said this before. Shoot, I, I did a whole video on it. It's imperative you do not lose control of your purchases of precious metals, your spending, whether you know you're you're trying to time it or dollar cost average, whether you're you know buying it with cash or credit card or online or at an LCS or direct from other stackers, whatever it is, keep your composure. Don't overextend yourself. Okay, I know it's especially if you're new, you want to catch up, you want to buy as much as you can, as fast as you can. And it's not bad to accelerate your stacking to play some level of catch up, but don't panic. I know there's a lot in the news that makes you think, oh my word, the world's coming to an end. I got to buy this stuff. No, just take a deep breath. And don't get overextended. Don't get into debt when you're buying this stuff. You do... What you don't want to have happen, and I've seen this a lot, is you don't want to have to sell your precious metals prematurely. Now, number three, dollar cost average your purchases of precious metals. Dollar cost average. That is making the same dollar purchases at regular time intervals. So you wind up actually buying more metals when the prices are low and you buy less metals when they're high. Why, why do I say this? Well, one of the advantages here is that this approach helps you develop 
discipline. You, you don't want to get into stacking with this trader mentality that causes, you know, you know, a lot of the market maniacs out there to just chase whatever's hot and just keep buying and selling. And then, oh, I don't want this anymore. I'm going to sell it. And you you actually can lose money in each of those exchanges. So you got to be careful uh, to, to, to not get carried away in that regard. No, you, you want to foster a more disciplined investor philosophy. So, you know, dollar cost averaging helps you do that. It also helps you, you know, just kind of relax a little bit when the price drops, right? If we get a, a downturn in precious metals, you know, silver and gold prices, you don't get too upset. Why? Well, you, you see it as a longer term buying opportunity. You can get more precious metals. That's a good thing. It softens the blow. All right. So number four, get the right dealer. Oh, I cannot stress this enough. Be careful of the fly by night, you know, we buy gold places or the uh, pawn shops where they cater to the ignorant and the desperate. I'm not saying you can never get a deal at a pawn shop. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of times you don't. If you go in there and you start talking about spot prices, a lot of times they say, yeah, forget it. <laughs> they don't want to deal with you. They're looking for people who are uneducated in this regard. So find a good dealer, all right? A local coin shop dealer, an LCS dealer. I mean, it, if you're a newbie, it can be really hard to know what to buy, uh, what's a good deal, who to trust, right? Uh, you know, you, you want to find an established uh, dealer with a, a, a quality reputation, okay? That's essential. You know, somebody who has a good name in the community. Uh, and Because a, a, a good dealer is going to treat you fairly. You, he's going to, he or she's going to help you find what you're after. Well, start to understand you know, the type of stacker you are and will charge you reasonable fees. So it's really important to establish a good relationship with the right precious metals dealer. Number five, protect your metals. It, it, it's sure handy to have some precious metals right at arm reach. You know, Yan Yankee has like some right over here. I can reach over and you know, grab some American Silver Eagles. Okay, that, that's nice. I, I content create, so I like to have some of it at the ready. But it is very important to keep the bulk of your metal in a safe place, preferably a safe, okay? <laughs> Especially as your stack gets bigger and bigger. So get a safe if you don't have one and use it. Every time you leave your house or your apartment, put your metals in the safe. You don't just leave it all over the place, okay? And if you're if you're vaulting your precious metals, I'm not sure you know if you're into that or uh, if you know what that means. But that means having a third party hold your metals. And I know there are some people out there that, for whatever reason, can't actually hold on uh, firsthand with their metals. You got to make sure that that what they're holding is kept separate or segregated in the vault and that you can go and inspect it anytime you wish. Very important if you have somebody else holding your gold and silver. Number six, a little information can make a big difference. Now, you don't need to be an expert at the silver markets and you know be phenomenal at timing and flipping your, your metals, okay? You don't need all that to be a successful stacker. However, you'll probably increase your chances of being successful if you understand some of the fundamental factors that drive silver prices up and down. And if you pay regular attention to the current supply and demand aspects of the market, this is important. It helps you. So educate yourself. Come on, read. There's plenty of stuff out there on the web. Watch YouTube videos. Yeah including mine if you want, on occasion. <laughs> but definitely stay informed. That's number six. And it can make a big difference in your stacking. Number seven, 
poured silver is art. Not really a good way to stack. Now, don't get me wrong, owning a nice poured uh, piece of silver is fun, okay? It can provide a lot of enjoyment, a little personal satisfaction. Uh, it's a great way to support people in the community. I get all that. It's really nice to get poured silver. But you got to be careful here. They're primarily artwork to hold as a collectible, okay? They're not really uh, investments per se. When you want to cash in silver, you're not going to want to bring a Yankee stacking round to a local coin shop and, and, and try to convince them to uh, buy it or, or someone else in, uh, you know, that's interested in buying silver. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to you know, uh, try to convince people that this is legitimate and you're not going to get the same type of uh, value, if you will, like you would with an American silver eagle. It's just, it's not a really great piece of silver to buy if you want to sell your silver, which I don't like to do. So uh, I'm not against uh, buying poured silver, but you really do need to be careful. So that's number seven. Now, how about number eight? Establish an exit strategy. Now, I haven't talked a lot about exit strategies on my channel because again, I'm a purpose stacker. I buy this stuff and once I buy it, I don't like to sell it. Occasionally I'll flip it, but that's rare. I like to hold my metals, okay? <laughs> I don't want to get rid of them. I want to sell them. But there that's not the only exit strategy, okay? Yes, selling is an exit strategy, especially if you're a flipper stacker, you know, someone who's looking at this stuff as a, an investment, either short, medium, or long term, and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to buy this. It's going to go up in value, and then I'm going to turn around and sell it for for more, and I'm going to make money. Yes, that is one exit strategy, and you need to think about when you would do that, how you would do that. Again, that local coin shop dealer comes in handy if you're going to sell your silver and gold. So, you know, how, um, you know, what you're going to do with the proceeds when you sell it. So that's a very important exit strategy. And taxes come into play there too as well if you're selling for a profit. However, there is another exit strategy. And as a prepper stacker, it's one of the main reasons why I am stacking. And that is to trade or barter. It's an, another way to sell, if you will, your precious metals, but you're not selling it for fiat dollars. Because frankly, I don't want to exchange this for cash. I want to exchange it for other valuable assets. Okay, so that's another type of exit strategy. And you do need to think about when you would do that, how you would do that, what types of silver and gold you should have if you're going to be doing that and having that kind of exit strategy. So that's number eight, establish an exit strategy. Number nine, mine, 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 <laughs> mine, mining stocks. Consider silver and gold mining stocks as a good way to really invest in precious metals. Yes, they're paper in nature. They're not tangible, physical assets. But if you're locked up in a retirement account that doesn't let you purchase physical silver and gold, you really need to consider shifting into what I believe is a severely underbought asset. Just be careful, okay? Because it's a lot like cough syrup, okay? It's good in small doses, but you know, if, if you take too much of it, <laughs> you can get sick. And if you put too many, you know, mining stocks in your overall portfolio, your your, uh, your wealth could get sick. So, depending on your goals and uh, your your uh, uh, tolerance personally for risk. A small portion of mining stocks can be really, really smart. It's a speculative asset, but consider it, really. And number 10, <laughs> the 10th rule that I have, when all else fails, precious metals remains. Remember that, guys. Now, I, I don't want to be all doom and gloom here, okay? But, but the truth of the matter is that silver, all right, silver is money. 
It's the world's money of last resort. Gold is also money, all right? And if we, or when we, have a severe economic collapse, paper's going to be worthless. And silver will become, I believe, a currency once again for the purchase of goods and services. Gold, yeah, that's a major store of wealth. It preserves it. It's great to have. It might be <laughs> very hard to barter for you know, a loaf of bread with one of these things. It's, you wouldn't do that. Fractional gold. There we go. That might be uh, barter fodder. But silver, especially constitutional silver, okay? Those are the things that I think will be of very, um, uh, very frequently bartered with. A half dollar of silver, 90%, very important. So every investor really should own some physical silver to store just in case as an emergency, especially constitutional silver. So there you have it, folks. Those are the 10 rules for gold and silver stacking. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't. Really appreciate you watching this channel. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.